Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne of praise yes, and grace, Lord God, asking you to forgive us for all our sins and unrighteousness, any and everything that we did that's not pleasing in your eyesight, God. Mm. We ask that you cleanse us and wash us, oh God, yes, with your precious blood and make us whiter than snow in the sweet, holy, and precious, yes. and mighty, and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Lord, but then we just ask, oh God, that melody decrease, oh God, that yes, you increase, oh God, not my words, oh God, but your words be spoken out of my mouth in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We pray, Lord God, for everybody that is here in this place, everybody yes, that will hear your word, oh God, yes, that they will receive Jesus. it, oh God, that they will receive, Lord God, correction, Lord God, that yes. they will receive uh, knowledge, Lord God, from your word, understanding, oh God, yes. wisdom from your word, oh yes, God, Lord. in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask that even through your word, Lord God, that you continue to teach us, oh God. Yeah, as as so. I'm teaching the word, continue to teach us, oh God, in yeah. the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for those who are sick in their body, oh God. We pray for the president, oh God. Yeah. We pray for those who are in authority over us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We just pray for all your, uh, uh, for all your people around the world, the country, the islands, and the sea, oh God. That yeah. you just have your way, oh God. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just ask, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, that you just help us, oh God, on today and each and every day, Lord God, to live right, do right, act right, and eat right, oh yes, God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, and by the blood of the Lamb of God, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, today's topic is watch your words. Watch your mouth. Excuse me. Watch your mouth. Words. Okay. What is today's topic? Okay. So, um, we're going to do. Part two, but we're going to talk about part one because of the timing. We're not going to be able to get through it all. Part one is on YouTube. You can go to Melody Moody, look it up, Sober Living Ministries. Part one is on there of Watch uh, Your Mouth. And we're going to do part two today, but I'm just going to go over uh, just briefly about what part one was about. So this is, um, I have three points. So, um, Part one was the power of words. So we brought out some scriptures uh, coming out of Matthew, the 12th chapter, 36th verse. Um, we brought out Colossians 3 and 8. We brought out Matthew 15. Hold 10. on, sisters. Oh, I'm writing them. Colossians 3 and 8. Uh, Matthew 15, 10 through 20. Uh, we brought out 2 Timothy 2, 15 through 16. Ephesians 4 and 29. Wait, 2 Timothy 2? 15 through 16. Okay. Ephesians 4 and 29. We brought out James 3, 8 and 18. 1 Peter 3, 10 through 12. And Proverbs 18, 19 through 21. And that was talking about the power of words, which was my first point. So I do want to say this. Uh, before we get started, talking about the power of words, that so many people are worrying about being judged, or people judging them. When they see the topic power of words, they're thinking, oh, oh, they about to judge me, I'm going to skip over that message. So, this is not a message of judgment. For custom Christians, this is not a judgment message for lukewarm Christians. This is not even a judgment for people who are walking around claiming they don't have a filter, but this is truth. This is the word of God. This is the filter, and this is knowledge. We were just talking about it. <laughs> Amen. So this knowledge on tonight to know how to watch your mouth. Okay? So my second point is, we can't do it without God. And what we can't do what? We can't watch our words or watch our mouth without God. So we're going to go to Psalms 34 and 13. Psalms. And it reads, keep Hold on. Th Hold on. She's running. Slow down, sis. We got to get there. 34. And 13. Oh. Oh, page 711. Sorry. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. So it reads, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile or deceit. So who do y'all think are going to help y'all with that? 
or help us with that. Jesus. Jesus. He is the only one that can help us. Because we know this tongue right here in the Bible says it can't be tamed. But who can tame it? Jesus. Jesus. The Holy Spirit. We got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. That tongue can be tamed. But you can't tame it. Because we, you know, we, we flesh. We, yeah. we be in that flesh. We like to be in that flesh all the time. But if that Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, that tongue can be tamed. So uh, that tongue can be tamed. So keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking deceit. On its equal thing. Psalms 141 and 3. So basically, we're coming out of Psalms and Proverbs today. We're going to eat these two. Uh, can you uh, read 14 right quick? If you don't mind. And it says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Amen. So that's the part of keeping your tongue from evil. Depart from it. Don't let evil words come out of your mouth. Do good all the time. Seek peace and pursue it. Go after it. You can you, you find you some peace. Verse. Sir? The 15th verse. I'm getting greedy too. Okay. You find you some peace. It's a pursue it. So here's your peace right there. You start to find peace, you better run after it. You got to pursue it. Come on. Because the peace what? To pass what? All understanding. All understanding. That means you can't understand it, so I want some peace. And I'm going to run after it. I'm going to chase it. We got to chase it. Just like we chase Jesus, we got to chase that peace because he is what? The Prince of Peace. So we got to chase it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. So, how come you want to listen to his wicked? Because they're wicked. They do evil. They're not his children. And you mean to tell me you're going to hear my prayer? You're not going to hear your prayer. That don't sound good. I've got to stop being like that. you got to stop it. Whoever you are, get you some Jesus. Get you some Jesus. Amen. Nice try. That was a, that was a <laughs> heck of a curve right there. Psalms <laughs> 141 and 3. Hold on. Okay. Okay, 777. All right, so it says, set a watch or set a guard. And there's a comma. And then it says, oh, Lord, before my mouth. So David is asking God to set a guard before his mouth. He said, keep the door of my lips. And why do you think he asked God to set a watch on his mouth? So that he won't like the wrong guy. Okay, and because what else? He don't want the wrong guy. That's a good point. And what else? He need help doing it because he can't Cause do it. Because he can't do it. Yeah. He can't do it. He's and he help. knew it. He's seeking help. He knew it. Come on. Yeah. He knew he couldn't do it, so he, he went to the right one. He went to the store. He went to the one who he know that can do it for him. So we got to remember that. So you know that you can't do it and you know you got a problem with your mouth. You know you got a problem with your words. Go to do it. Because you can't do it on your own in the first place. So I don't even know why you're trying. Amen. Why try to do it on your own when you got some help? Amen. Or when you have some help by a speaking people. Why do it on your own? Amen. Amen. So it says, so we got to move on. Psalms 19 and 4. Psalms 19 and 14. Excuse me. Psalms 19 and 14. Go back. Right there. To the left. Either watch over my mouth, Jesus. Oh. Huh? I didn't finish three. I didn't finish three. I did. I said keep the door of my lips. 19 and 14. And I'm going to stop right there before I read it. And I just want to give a quick testimony. I almost forgot. I just thank God. Being able to watch your mouth because he brought it out part of my testimony. It's not, it's your mouth, it's what comes out your mouth, but it's also your presentation. It's how you deliver what's coming out of your mouth. And we ain't talking about cussing Christians, people who think it's okay to cuss and cuss people out for politely. We're not talking about that. We're talking about when you go to a person, how people perceive, people perceive the things that are coming out of your mouth. So when you go to your, like, I get a little bit agitated when people make it late. 
So the Lord been working on me with that. I've been, um, we supposed to leave at this time. Um, y'all ready? I'm, I'm trying to be calm in my mm-hmm. spirit and say, man, I thought y'all said, come on. Yeah. Come on, let's go. I got to go. I got to teach the word. Now, how that look? If I'm sitting up there being aggravated and agitated talking to you just because I got to teach the word? No, I got to have a calm spirit because I got to be calm before I go, before the Lord, before I even go before you. So I thank God that he's been helping me this. Not just today, he's been yeah, you helping me. Yes, well, I said thank you, Father. So but how does that look, though? That's a good point you brought out. How does it look when you, you got to do something for God and yet you... Yeah. you you know what I'm saying? You're not showing God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some don't add up there. That's that's yeah. not. You answer, you agitate. It's like, I mean, I'm, I want to get there. I'm getting, I want to get to the house, but it's still, still how I present it. I still got to present myself in a loving way. No mm-hmm. matter if I'm, I'm acting like that because I want to hurry and get to the house because I'm burning and, you know, I got to get this way. It don't matter. Yeah. No matter what you're trying to do, you got to watch how you do it. Amen. Watch how you mm. say it. Watch how he comes out. Well, I got one thing. So pursuing peace, that for some reason that stuck out. That was a, you know what I'm saying? So to pursue peace, and yeah. you got to have that in you order to do, to do anything. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I got a, I, I, while y'all was uh, eating some old I found another verse in Psalm 141 and 4. Can you give me what that's for? Amen. Psalms 141 and 4. Yeah. And it says, incline not thy heart to any evil, any evil thing, to practice wicked works with the men that work in iniquity, iniquity, excuse me, and let and let me not eat of their dainties. What is dainty? That's their food. Their way? Ooh, that's their food. That's their food. If I look at that. Uh, 14 and 4 is has delicious mm-hmm. delicates. That's the, that's the food they eat. So he's praying for that too. I'll pray that when I go to Golden Corral. Come on. Yeah, I hope y'all follow Oh, yeah, because they're trying to set us up. I'm going to get weak. Matthew 3 and 7. 
through 10 verse. Page 1137, Matthew's third chapter, and explain that 7, 8, 9, and 10 verse. Matthew. It says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? It says, Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up the children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the foot, I mean, I'm sorry, unto the root of the trees, therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So the words that came out of John the Baptist's mouth was that good word. He was speaking to them. He was telling them about themselves. Yeah. It wasn't no kind words. He didn't mean them to be kind. He was letting them know. Now, see, words, I got to understand what words are. Mm -hmm. Words is to help you come out. Now, if I flatter you, because the Bible says I don't flatter you with my lips. Yeah. If I flatter you, make you think you are right, because I'm giving to you some good, smooth words. Well, then that's, that's not going to help you. But John the Baptist, that's enough not to come back to church next Sunday. He called him what? Generation of Vipers. Now, how would y'all like to, for me to call y'all that? But my word. Well, if, if that's what I need. If that's what I need. <laughs> I mean, I got, I mean, yeah, I'm here today. Now, I can't say that. I can't say that before, but. They were doing wrong. Today. So then he yeah. called them out. Yeah. So that word, we got to understand words are to help us to come out. It's not to offend you. But some people do get offended. Isn't there a scripture say don't be, don't take offense? Yeah. Isn't there a scripture? Well, offense don't come. Offense don't come. But beware where offense come from. Right. So. Sometimes the word of God will offend us if we don't want to stop what we're doing. It can become offense to us. Can I, what about Matthew 23 and uh, 13? We're talking about words now. Matthew 23 and 13. Yeah, when y'all get to the page, y'all can call it that. 1167? Thank you. Could you uh, uh, explain that to me? And this is Jesus talking right here. Mm -hmm. It says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now, will y'all come back to church next Sunday if I call y'all here? If we know we're doing wrong. wrong. That's because we learn. That's yeah. we so wrong. these words are to help those that's doing it. It's not for the righteous. That's right. Words that for the righteous if you correct them, the scripture says they become more wise. But if you correct a scorner, he's going to hate you. Yeah. So i got to understand with words, when I say words, what actually that is, what I'm doing. So I'm trying to help you to come out. That's love. Mm -hmm. that is, now, some people call that hate. But that, that's love to help you to turn around. If I don't love you, I can fight you my mouth, make you believe you're okay, and then you bust hair wide open at the end. Well, those words that help you out now. Uh, so then here, Jesus Christ called him a hypocrite. Continue the 13th verse. And it says, For ye, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So they're not, they, it, it, the hypocrites stopping other people from actually right. turning from what they're doing against God mm -hmm. by giving them smooth words. So I got to understand about words. All right, now the Lord told me that's in James, the third chapter, how you going to curse God and, bless, and then bless man. 
uh, down on not to be. Right, so I got to understand my role. I can't curse you. Could y'all read Mal Malachi for me? Since I came, let's find out who came. Uh, we talked about some words, right? And answer. We're dealing with some words right now. All right, Malachi 3 and 7 says, could you read 3 and 7? That's page 1131. To the ninth verse. Even from the days of your father, ye are gone away from my ordinance, and have not kept him. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Mm -hmm. Then it says, Will like man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein, where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, right, even so, this whole nation. Okay, so James told me don't curse you. But who's doing the cursing with? God is. God, God is. All right. I'll take the best of all with this now. Yo, child, take all the brother. If I'm not supposed to curse you, am I a minister of God? Am I a minister? Y'all don't know? Are you a minister? I don't know if I'm a minister or not. Yeah. 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 But I'm confused. Because Sister, Sister Melody is a minister of God. But John Barry, he, when he's writing the word, he's a minister. Sister Kim, when she's writing the word, she's a minister. Sister, uh, you better write. Uh, when she speaks the word, she's a minister. All right. So all of us are what? Men. And we're going to put Brother Moody, since he just got here, we're going to put him in there too. When he speaks the word of God, he's a minister. Okay. Right. So my job is to bring out the one that can't curse you so you won't be cursed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So I got to help you because I know that the word says if you do this, God will curse you. Mm -hmm. That ain't me. I'm just a, I'm just a messenger. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm the mail carrier. I'm carrying the mail. Bringing y'all a bill, which y'all them, y'all. All right. So he said, "You curse because so will a man rob God? So that money does that to own me? The the, the, the the first fruits? Of no, it belongs to God. Who that belong to? God. So I have to let you know who that. That's not your money. Mm -hmm. I know some people said, my money, I'm giving God my ten percent. That ain't it's your money.'" money. And that's his money. That's his money. The first fruits is his. his money. But if I don't tell you that ain't your money, you think you gonna so. think that's your money? Think you doing something? You ain't doing nothing. You just doing what the word of God told you to do. And if you don't do it, what are you gonna do? He gonna curse you. He gonna curse you with a curse. Never curse. Can somebody read? Malachi 2. Now we're talking about words now. 1 through 3. And it says, And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if uh, Malachi 1130. Oh, never. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings, yea, I have cursed them already because ye do not lay it, uh, it to heart. You said three? Yeah. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung up on your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast. And one shall take you away with it. Oh, and one Does that sound like a smooth? No. 
But you see, if you are a messenger of God, a servant, you have to know that what God is going to do to this person. If you're not telling this person what God is going to do to you, I don't care how smooth you make it, it's going to happen to you. Why? Because the Word said it. Because God said it. That's what he's going to do. So, I'm learning more now how to help the people of God is with the word. Now, my job is not to curse you. Here's what my job is. Come with me to 1140, Matthew 5 and 44. Mm, this is my job. Now, God's job, you understand what God's job is. That's my and scripture. I can't bless you, even though I, that's my job to bless you, but if God got a curse on you, will you get blessed? No. I can bless you all day long. With your mouth. But this is my job to do that night. I still got to do this job. Yeah. Matthew 5 mm -hmm. and 44. You got it. Yeah. 44. Mm -hmm. 44. 44. 44. 44. That's no, page 11. You're right. Chapter. That's page 1141. That's my scripture. It says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. So those that curse me, I got to what? Bless them. Bless them. So you curse me out, I still got to bless you. Then if you misuse me, I got to pray for you because you know that this fight will use you. Because uh -huh. you go out some Christians on this fight, it. it's going to happen. I don't care what y'all say. The word says it's going to happen. All right, so I got to pray for you. I can't go and pop you side your head because you did that to me. There ain't going to be no love. No love. <laughs> so I got to know what my point is and I got to teach the people of God what God's part is. This is my part. Now notice if I do my part. What if I can't do my part? What I got to do? I got to go to You say that earlier. says, so, no. I got to go pray. I, God, you got to help me because I didn't push my buttons. Mm -hmm. Now you got to help me to keep this collection. Right. No, I can't keep it. I'm about ready to go off. So my pride is to do what God wants me to do. Then my pride is help me to tell the people of God what you want done. And if they don't do it, what's going to happen? They're going to get a curse put on them. <laughs> a curse put on them. All right, so then if I do that part, watch what's going to happen. Let's go all the way to the 48th verse. It says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your... Father, which is in heaven, is first. That's my job, is to be like that by obeying the 44th verse and by listening to the other verses that you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. You make the sun to rise on the evil, on the good, and send it rain on the just and unjust. If you love them which love you, what reward? There is no reward to love folks that love you. Uh -huh. It's to love the unlovable. How are you going to do that? Jesus. You got to pray for that. You got to pray for that. You got to go to Jesus. I can't do it. I know you can't do it. Now, I didn't try. I can't love you to push my foot. Made me mad. So I got to pray for God love to flow through me. Because that's my part of love. I'm going to show you another part that belongs to God and it don't belong to you. Can y'all read Proverbs? Sixth chapter, the sixteenth verse. And don't blow the blow the God. To deal with that mouth. So I gotta know God's part and what my part is, I'm gonna be perfect. You know, if I'm gonna be perfect, I gotta know what my part is. So then I gotta warn you what God's part is. If I don't warn you, what's gonna happen? You're gonna sin. You're gonna fall off. You're gonna be destroyed. Yeah. Hmm. You're gonna be destroyed by God. So you're gonna do His part. At page seven eighty-seven, sixth chapter. Now God told me to love. What are you gonna do? Six and what? 
six chapters, 16 verse. 16 and 16. Watch what you going to do. These six things do the Lord hate. Ye, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Yeah. A proud look. He tell you what he hate now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So when she finished with that, I want to know who I'm supposed to hate that to? Yeah. Yeah. I got to hate for God, hate the love, love of God, love. love. But it's not for me to take anything on you, to do you any, any harm. That's not for me. That's for God. Did you belong to? To the Lord. To the Lord. That's vengeance. You don't, he didn't give that to us. He gave us forgiveness, and he gave us love to, do, to that person. The other part belongs to God. But I got to hate what he hate and love what he love. But I got to know how to do it. See, because I can hate you know, and, and might want to put them on you. But no, nah, it ain't my part. Then you belong to the Lord. So, so I got some knowledge now who that belongs to that Get a lot of hate trap up in here. Just like she did before she eat that. She's swallowing in the two. Mm -hmm. Continue. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. And heart, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies. And he that saw it gets hard among the brethren. That don't sound good, though. Mm -hmm. But God hates. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got to hate that, too. I can't be doing any of this because God don't like it. Mm -hmm. So I got to pray because that's not easy for me to keep mm -hmm. by myself. I can't do that. I'm going to let y'all know right off the top. I can't stop eating the wrong junk and causing problems to my body without the Lord. I can't do it. David prayed for God to heaven with his food, but he put it in his mouth. So there ain't no way nobody in here going to eat right all the time. Amen. You got what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I know. I know you. Because I know me too. Amen. So I got to pray for God to heal me. So we have to know what to pray. That's what Sister Melvin did there with the beginning about praying. How David had to pray for did Jesus cry out the prayer? Yes. What was his cry? To take this cup. And what did he say? No, nevertheless, your will, Father. If Jesus had to oh, come on, y'all. If Jesus had to pray for God to help him, what you think? We got Oh. We got to fall right now. Uh, I'll surrender. I'll surrender. <laughs>
So you go all the way to read back to 27, you'll find out that the things that they say with their mouth, could they ever be forgiven for that? No. no. The Bible said, you ain't, you, if you do that, you can't be forgiven in this life. So that group of people that did that are never be forgiven. Because they said that he was cast in the devil's out by belly ball of the devil. He said, you can say something against me. You can talk about it. You can say anything you want against me. But don't say nothing against the Holy Spirit. That's the thing. Watch the words. Watch what comes out of the mouth. Watch the devil. Watch the words that come out of it. Look out now. Make sure you're saying the right thing with your mouth. And you line up from the word of God. And it goes back to knowledge. That's what you dealt with at the beginning about knowledge. I have knowledge of the word. That's why it's so important to get into the word and know the word and study the word. That's why it's also important to be in the right place with a, a, a pastor that's going to teach you the word the right way. Because a lot of people, they're perishing because they don't know the word or they're not being taught properly. The pastors are not rightly dividing the word of God. So now they lost. Now they, like the Pharisees, you going straight to hell. Because you done blasphemed against the Holy Ghost because ain't nobody taught you. Ain't nobody taught me. And, and you not getting in the word for yourself to even read it to know. And if you don't know what it means, then you can ask somebody for understanding of what it means. So what the scripture says about lack of knowledge. Well, people want to perish. We ain't perishing over here. Amen. I'm going to just tell you how know. like it is. There's Amen. no way that you're going to perish over here. Because we're going to feed you something. Word. Oh, it's a word that's going to give you knowledge. Oh, yeah, all brother. That's going to give y'all some knowledge. All right, and it says, and he that refrained for refraining his lips is wise. So you got to know when to speak. How you heard it, sister? When to speak. And that's a wise person. Oh, uh, yeah. So we was just talking about wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So that wisdom comes from knowing when to open your mouth. That's it. So now, when it's time to open your mouth, you better open it. When it comes to say what the Lord say, yeah. sometimes you get a little nervous and a little scared to say what does say the Lord. That's why I said people are always worrying about judgment. We don't care about you being judged. We don't care about what you think, how you feel, because we're trying to teach the word of God. Amen. We're trying to save your soul from hell. So stop worrying about who judging you. Or who worried about what's coming out your mouth, you need to be worried about what's coming out your mouth. Because then you will be not wise if you don't watch your lips. 20, it says, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. Right. Y'all know what choice silver is? That's that stuff that them, that's the stuff people. <laughs> that's the good stuff they bring out at the, uh, the nice little parties. The choice silver. It said the heart of the wicked is little word. So if you wicked, your heart is a little word. And you think you're doing something, all these wicked people around here, they really think they're doing something, living like they're going around, talking about that, living their best life. It said you a little word. You, 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 uh, what are yeah, you worth? Yeah. If you're not bringing, it, uh, bringing people to the kingdom of God, what are you worth? And people really think that they all let you think you're something. It's the Bible. I didn't say it. He says the wicked is a little word. Lord, what are you here for? If you're not bringing this word, if you're not teaching this word, or if you're not telling somebody about Jesus, if you're not telling somebody how to live, if you're not telling somebody how to make it to heaven, you is a little word. Lord, if you are with you. I didn't say it. The Lord said it. Amen. So we're talking about words. Watch your words. Amen. The Lord's words is his words, and his words is, if you can put a period behind it, you need to watch your words. We need to watch what we come, what come out of our mouth. So if God said it, and we don't like it all well, but Amen. then we got to watch what we say out of our mouth so that we can be righteous and right in his eyesight. Amen. The lips of the righteous feed me, but the fools die for want of wisdom. God. And that's for lack of wisdom. So the lip of the righteous, and we were just talking about this. Yeah, the yeah, righteous lip, we teach. don't feed many. We teach you. We we edifying you in the word of God. So we feed many. It's going forth. It's coming. It's like the, the five law is being spread wrong. Yeah. And it says, but fools die for the 
lack of wisdom. That's why when you pray, you gotta ask God, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You like it with You got come on. If you ask what do you say? If you like if you like with it, ask God. Ask. All you gotta do is ask for it. Amen. Come on. And then Don't give it what? Liberally. Give it free. Free. You see, you go. Here you go, you passing it out for free. We want we want all that other stuff they passing out for free, but the stuff that we need or want. We're not asking for it. All right, God, give me wisdom. We're going to stand in line for them free food stamps. We'll go stand in line for them free school supplies. But when the doors of the church open and uh, he's pouring out wisdom through his word, we got a problem. Lord. We don't want to come. Oh, my back hurt. Oh, I got a headache. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Oh. We got every excuse in the book. Hey, back up. You're on this Get you some God. wisdom. What's going to happen to you? Come get some wisdom. And then, so, uh, let's see, 1920, and it's, oh, we're at 20, we're at 21. Okay, skip down to 31. And it says, the mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom. Amen. Again, the mouth of the just. Yeah. And it says, but the forward, or the perverse tongue, shall be cut out. So this is telling you over and over again. It's repetitive, but it's letting you know that the God is serious about what's coming out of your mouth. He is. He is very serious. He is not playing. So I'm going to read perverse or perverseness because this is a couple of scriptures that talk about being perverse or perverseness. Perverseness is deliberately, deliberately, that means on purpose, deviating from what is considered to be good, Moral or proper, what's, the, what's righteous, deliberately saying, I'm not doing what's righteous. And said, it can also mean being stubborn or uncooperative and resisting guidance or discipline. I don't know what that so you deliberately, on purpose, on purpose, you're, you're not going to receive the discipline, you're not going to receive the correction. Because of your perverseness, Lord, that's what that means. It says, Lord. you shall be cut out. And it said the tongue. So we're going we to go with that. Your tongue's going to be cut off. <laughs> You're going to be cut off. Your tongue, your words, going to be cut off. Because you, you will be no God, longer in this. Yeah, cool. Lord is trying to tell us something here. Yeah, 32, the lips of the righteous knows what is acceptable. Yeah. How do you look to the righteous know what is acceptable? Because we follow out to God and say, be ye perfect as I am perfect. So we got, we not listening to the people telling us we can't be perfect now. Yeah, we not listening to the people telling we holy rollers. Yes, I'm going to roll with the holiness like God told them to. Yeah, yeah I'm a holy roller. Because I'm rolling. No man can see God. Oh, so yeah, running. I'm holy rolling because I want to see God. So the lips of the righteous, so I'm going to be righteous like he's righteous, knows. We know what's acceptable in this time. So we know what to say. Amen. And even when we don't know what to say, we know what to say because the Holy Spirit don't care. Amen. That's what to say. If the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. So he says, but, but, so it's two parts. But the mouth of the wicked speak it perversely. Again, it's back to that verse. It's speaking this stuff on purpose. It's deliberately going against the word of God. Yes. Intentionally. Because you want to. But again, what the word say, you're going to be cut off. Wrong. So we got to watch our mouths. We got to watch what, our, which, what we say out of our mouths. Amen. Um, Proverbs 12 and 14. Proverbs 12 and 14. We're going to eat Proverbs today. That's good. That's good for wisdom. And it says, a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. So if I'm going to be satisfied with good, what do you think need to be coming out of my mouth? Good, good. good things. <laughs> and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. So if I'm speaking good, I'm doing good, everything that my hands touch is going to be good. Amen. So we got to do good. We talk about good things, good words, good things. That coming out of our mouth is going to produce good things. Amen. It's going to produce a good reward. And what is that reward? Amen. Heaven. Yeah, like That's it. the key. That's the goal. Amen. What's wrong with that picture? That's a good picture. Come on. You got to understand. This mouth. Come on. This mouth. What is that? Deadly poison? Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. We got to watch it. 
got to say what God says. We got to say what God says at all times. And if we don't know what God says again, here you go right here. And it's okay. You don't know? Come on, get in that book. Amen. We all learn and we all grow it. Amen. Drop down to 17. And it says, he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. So we talk, we talking about all words. We're not just talking about cuss words. We're talking about lies. Amen. So he that speaketh the truth showeth forth righteousness. But a false witness deceit. If you speak in lies, if you're false, uh, being false against your brother and your sister, that's deceit. That's deception. Amen. Where do you think you're going? He said, a what shall not tarry in your sight? A lie. A lie shall not tarry in his sight. So we got to, back to our words, watch what come out of your mouth. Amen. If you're lying, Lord, have mercy. what does it say? Mm -hmm. A liar you shall not tear again in sight. So we got to watch, we got to watch, watch what come out of their mouth. Do not lie. Ain't nothing, you ain't got nothing good to say. Don't tell you at all. That's what your mama told you. <laughs> 18, it says, there is that speak it like the piercing of a sword. That's the ones who will cut you deep with them words. I'm talking about cut you up so bad, you done felt like somebody naturally stabbed you with a knife. It says, but the tongue of the wise, back to that wise, is health. So if I'm wise and I watch what I'm speaking, I'm, 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 I'm bringing help to you. I bring the help to myself. Mm -hmm. That help is life. We speak in life by speaking the word of God, yeah. by telling you how to live according to the word of God, not according to melody, not according to him, her, whoever, but according to the word of That's God. It. That's it. This is life. This is breath. This is the word. This is truth, yet again. And we can judge you. We ain't going to go there because we can bring it out, but people talking about don't want to be judged. We fruit inspectors over here. Amen. So, hey, we got to do what just says the Lord. That, that's, that's what we got to do. Did I read 19? Of the lips of truth, the lip of truth shall be established forever. So you speaking the truth, and who is the truth? He is the what? Jesus. Jesus is the truth. The and come on, yeah, and the lie. So if we speak, the lips of truth shall be established forever. He's going to be forever. Amen. If we speak his words, if we speak the truth, what's coming out of our mouth is going to be established forever. These words that God is teaching, Brother Young bringing out these scriptures, is going to be established forever. So keep them in your mind. Because this is what's going to last. It's not going nowhere. Now, if I, if I was up here lying, you would have forgot what I said. But we up here teaching truth, so you're going to remember. It's going to come back to you. Amen. It's going to start resonating with your spirit, man, because you want to live right. Amen. Right? Following the word. Amen. Amen. It says, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. We just said that. You tell that lie, that lie, boom, it's gone. People forget, they forget the lies they tell. Y'all notice that them lies, because they even forgot they told the lies. That's the enemy setting them up. They even forgot they were going to tell you another lie. Well, they got to remember that lie too much. Yeah, you true. can't remember it, because guess what? Holy Ghost ain't bringing it to your remembrance, and it's a lie. But the truth, he going to bring it to your remembrance. But he said, I'm coming, and I'm going to bring all things back to your remembrance. Yeah. Come on, and all things is this word. Amen. That's what it means. He ain't talking about I'm going to bring back what you did back in 1974 when you was driving it like a tiger in the club. He's not talking about that. He's talking about his word. Amen. If you eat this word, study this word, digest this word, then he's going to bring it back to your remembrance Amen. when it's time. When somebody needs a word, when your brother and sister are down, or when you see your brother and sister in sin, he's going to bring that word back to you, to you and let them know. Amen. Hey, the word said don't do this. Oh, this is how the word say live. He's going to bring it back to your members. Hey, you ready to go home? Yeah, I was, but I was like, you know, when people tell tell things that's not true, a person that's listening, they observe it. They listen, then they might, well, what did you tell me the other day? What was you talking about? Oh, I can't even remember. <laughs> 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 it wasn't the truth. It wasn't the truth. You're not going to forget. That's right. You're right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 15, 1 through 4. 15, 1 through 4. Proverbs. 
It says a soft answer answer turned it away wrath. But a grief but grievous word stirs up anger. Or harsh words stirs up anger. So we saying we were just talking about that again before we started. It's how you, it's your approach. A soft answer mm. at the right time. Exactly. <laughs> and you at the right time, a soft answer turns it away wrath. Right. That means if I already see you agitated, then I need to give a soft <laughs> answer because it's going to turn away wrath. Right. It's going to turn away Something that's going to stir up to where we're we going to be into it, we're going to be fighting, you might say some words, whatever the case might be. But if I come with a soft, this this when, this is when you got to use wisdom. You use wisdom with the scripture. You use wisdom when you're dealing with people to know what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and at the right time. This is, uh, this is, this is what I'm praying for. And I hope, it, I hope the rest of y'all pray for that too. That's Proverbs 15 and 28. We're on, that, on the same page, 796. Proverbs 15 and 28. The heart of the righteous studies to answer. The mouth of the wicked poured out evil time. Evil. All right. So I have to study the word of God to answer questions. Because people are going to have reaction to questions. That is, that's just going to happen. God, if I pray God give me a righteous heart to study what your word says about the question that he asked me. Have I got that? That's the heart of the righteous. All right? Proverbs 16 and 23, she read 24. All right? Proverbs 16 and 23, I pray for that. And then you're going to see why I pray for that almost every day. Proverbs 16 and 23. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and added learning to his lips. Alright, so a heart of the wise. So I pray for God to give me a heart of the wise. Because I may not have that. I may have a heart of the wicked. So I pray for God to give me the heart of the wise. Because if I have a heart of the it's going to teach my mouth and added learning. To my lips, as God's word is, is teaching my mouth what to say. Amen. And my lips, is going to come out my what? My Amen. lips. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's going to come out the lips. Yes, sir. Uh, it got to get inside first. Come come out the lips. So I pray for God to, to, to help me to give me that heart of why. I also pray for God to give me a pure heart. Amen. But only the pure heart to see God. So I pray that proud. The former I pray about the heart, creating me. Because I might be even got a hold to the wrong thing now. Created me a clean heart and renew the right, right spirit. Because I might be even got a hold to the wrong spirit, like yeah. David did. David, David took his man by the head and killed him. So he asking God, don't take thy Holy Spirit away from me. So I'm saying, God, now here's my that's David proud now. Here's what I've learned how to pray. Lord, help me before I do it. Come on. So Amen. my heart will stay clean. Amen. Well, my heart has to be clean if I don't do the wrong no. against God. No. I got to know what's wrong. I got to know what's right. All right. So if I got knowledge to know what's right and what's wrong, then the 17 works of the flesh, is that right? No. 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 That's wrong. Yeah. Alright, if breaking the Ten Commandments, is that right? That's wrong. That's wrong. I gotta go. I'm trying to go somewhere, y'all. You breaking the Ten Commandments. I'm praying for I'm asking God to give it to me. And I'm praying for it. Now I gotta go study it. So I can learn it. So I can know how to answer. When folks answer me some questions. Answer. 
Right. right. How can you tell the difference? They, they gonna let you go. Mm -hmm. When you correct them, Sister Melody, they gonna say you can't judge me. They gonna let you know that you judging them, and you're not judging them. You're trying to give them the word to help them come out of what they're doing against God. Now, if they don't want to listen to you, then God turn them down. And it, the scripture says, is, is to fall in the hand of a living God, that ain't good. I'm trying to help you not to fall into his hand. The tongue of the wise use it knowledge of right. <laughs> it says, but the mouth of fools pour it out foolishness. Amen. Where you at, sister? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Two, back to okay, no, 15. 795. We're still reading. We read one, and now we're reading two. 795? Yes, sir. Proverbs uh, 15, and we have verse 2. We read verse 1, 795. So the tongue of the wise uses knowledge of right. So it's, come on. It said, I like when it says a right. It uses that knowledge of right. Some people are smart. They think they're so smart. They're so smart, they dumb. Like right now, we talk about these smart phones. <laughs> smart, dumb phones. But some people use their knowledge and they use it in a wrong way. That's right. But it says the tongue of the wise uses knowledge the right way. Amen. But the mouth of fools poured out nothing but foolishness. And then the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Uh -oh. So Lord know what you're doing, when you're doing it, where you're doing it at, so you can't hide. Amen. He's looking at the evil yeah. and he's looking at you. Yeah. To see if you're watching the words and see if you're speaking the words of God when you're supposed to be speaking them Amen. to the people you're supposed to be speaking them to. Yeah. He's watching the evil to know, hey, I see you. And guess what? I'm going to judge you. I'm going to curse you. Exactly. I'm going to be the one to condemn you. So watch it. Yeah. I'm talking about trying to watch out for Santa Claus. You better be trying to watch out for God. Because he ain't real, but God is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It says, a wholesome tongue, verse 4, is a tree of life. Amen. A wholesome tongue. Yeah. Listen, this right here has power. Yes. Come on, we can speak life. Come on, you speak Jesus spoke and rose up Lazarus with that tongue. Amen. So if we use this word, come on, we can speak people that are dying spiritually, we can speak life. That's it. It said a wholesome tongue. Is a tree of life. Amen. This right here, we got it. We all possess it. So we can give life. We can feed people Amen. the word of God so that people won't perish. Uh -huh. All we got to do is get in this word and know how God wants us to use this mouth. And yeah. we got to do it. Amen. 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 Let me finish and then I'm. It says, but perverseness therein is a breach. In the spirit. Right. And I love this because Kim brought out the breach in the spirit one time, but that word breach, come on, a breach in the spirit. Yeah. So a breach break is a break. It's a gap or a break. breakthrough in the spirit. Right. We don't want no breaks. We don't want no gaps in our spirit, man. Because you leave that gap in there. What you leave it rough for the enemy to walk oh, on in and consume you. Lord, we want the Lord to consume us. So we don't want no breaches. Amen. We don't want no gaps. Yeah. Close up and get you some gorilla glue. Right. Come <laughs> on. This word, let this word be that gorilla glue that's going to seal up that gap. Still up that breach. Amen. Come on, so that your spirit, man, can be right. Because yes. we don't want no breaches in the spirit. Amen. It's the perversion is people who intentionally disobey the word of oh, God. Who intentionally, if you teach me something, Brother Young, 
It all right, man. It wasn't no nice word. It wasn't nice at all. Now, but the Lord cursed us as when we went against him. Yeah. So I got a blessing when you curse. When you come
to shut up. Melody and Moody. Sometimes learn to shut up. I pray that prayer too. Amen. Yeah. That's a good prayer. Proverbs 21 and 23. Wait. Wait. 328. 328. Oh, 28. Yes, even a fool, even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, mm. is counted wise. Now he's saying even a fool, yeah, when he holds his peace, yeah. is counted wise? That is so. Come on. Even a fool. He's talking right. about something. <laughs> it's counted wise. And he that shut in his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Amen. So a fool can't have understanding. Yeah. When you yeah. shut, when you learn how to shut your lips, yeah. you are esteemed a man of understanding when you just learn to shut up. Just learn, like, humble yourself. You don't always have to have the last word, Melody and Moody. You don't always have to have the last word. Be a man of understanding. If you want, let me tell you something. If you're going to pray for wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and you want God to get it, what you going to do with it when he gives it to you? You going to use it? Or you going to hold up? Let me put it in my pocket. Yeah, I got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. I'm bad. But you're not using it. Come on, use it. If it gives it to you, ask for it. Man, if I ask you for something, that's because I want it. If I want it, that's because I'm going to use it because I need it. So use it. Amen? Amen. 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 Whoso keeping his mouth and his tongue, keeping his soul from troubles. Now you want to stay out of trouble. You want to stay out of fights. You want to stay out of hell. You want to stay out of jail. <laughs> Come on. You got to keep that mouth. Come on. Stay out the grave. Keep that tongue. Because, baby, you go on talking crazy to the wrong person. Huh. Something might happen to you. So you gotta watch this. That's why I said, get some understanding. A man of understanding knows when to shut his mouth. Right. You gotta know. Come on, it's talking about words that come out of your mouth. Right. So I'm gonna share. I'm gonna keep this word in, cause I, I ain't, you know, I ain't trying to get into it with you. Come on, stop giving you the big bad book. Keep your mouth and your tongue, so you can keep your soul from troubles. Keep it. This soul. Nobody wants a troubled soul. I want my soul to be rejoicing. Peace. I want my soul to be happy. Peace. Come on, I want peace in my soul. I, so I got a question that, Sister Mel. Yes, sir. And John the Baptist got in trouble with his tongue. How did he do that? He asked his disciples to go. John the Baptist. Yeah, when he, he was, was in jail. Was, uh, He was preaching to the king, taking his brother's wife. Yeah. Did he get in trouble? Yeah. You say that God yeah, he got in trouble. He, he was uh, he was preaching mm -hmm. about the king having his brother's wife. He was preaching right. against that. He was against, against, he was preaching that, against that, sin. Right. That's what got him in trouble. All right. That got him in trouble. What? The it, truth it got him in trouble. Caused him to lose his what? His head. His head. His head. It caused yeah. his head. Sometimes when you tell the truth to some people, it can get you in trouble. That know? Yeah. Did Jesus Christ get in trouble for speaking the truth? Yes. Yeah. What I mean? He lost his life. Crucified. Crucified. Now, now, I'm trying to write and divide this. I'm trying to hit the flip side of this. Here. The flip side is your tongue sometimes can get you in trouble and righteous. I wish I could make it where you won't get in trouble at all, but that wouldn't be the truth. But I think, but most of the time when you do speak the truth, people that don't want you to put the truth out there, they that's what they're gonna do. That's what they did to John the Baptist. They didn't want the truth to come out. Yeah, you know that's what you're saying. Huh? They yeah. didn't want the truth to come out. So. Here it is, even though they were speaking the truth, knowing that they were telling righteous things, the people didn't want other people to hear that about them, 
So they, they, they shut them up by yeah, killing. By, by killing. But exactly the truth is still going on today. today yeah. Yeah, that's so right. somebody might not like the truth coming out your mouth now. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could tell you that there ain't no flip side. <laughs> yeah. There is a flip side with this yeah. song. Because of, of what? Her word. Now, she spoke the wrong what? So she spoke right. She spoke right. She spoke right. She spoke right. Yeah. She said, she spoke, you in the name come on, Sister Kim. She, the pal, she and the officer, he didn't, have the, he didn't have the spirit. And he, I mean, he, he had. Yeah, not only that. He, he was, was, he was full of demons. Yeah. He was full of demons. Yeah. And, and so when she rebuked right. that, that demon right. came out and shot. But you also see that this man had skulls and stuff. I wish I could check. I got what you're saying. I, I, I received it. You, they got in trouble. They, they were the man, but their soul. Right. Even though you got in trouble, your soul, your soul going to heaven. So he said, persecuted for my name. Say, yeah. you persecuted for righteousness. Yeah. Man going to say you wrong. Man going to condemn you. Yeah. Man going to kill you. But your soul is right. going to heaven. Right. So you can't lose with God you when you choose a vow. Correct. Correct. You might, you might, you might lose your life. Yeah, you might lose your life, but your soul, you ain't losing that soul. Jesus Christ lost his life. John the Baptist lost his life. All the apostles lost his life. Yeah, yeah. How many apostles? All of them. Hey, pal. But hey, when Jesus died, when Jesus died, all of those prophets that lost their lives, uh, when Jesus died, the prophets even lost their lives. Uh, yeah. Some of them got put in prison mm -hmm. for telling the truth. Right. And the whole time, they would be persecuted. He will be persecuted for the truth. Wow. I, I wish I, I'm trying to hit you out with the flip side so you won't. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit may get hold of you one day to tell the truth. And it ain't going to hurt somebody. somebody. And that person that got hurt is going to try to hurt you. Right. Yes. Right. You better be ready for that. Ask the yeah. Lord to what? Shut your mouth then because right. in the time, as Sister Melody said, it's going to be a time to speak. To speak and a time to be quiet. And a time, time to, to, to yeah. To That's hold your peace. we got to ask God to help us because right. we want to live and proclaim his word. Yeah. Right. We want to, so we have to use wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We ain't going to say, oh, I'm going to the same thing. I'm the same I'm the same way. I said the blood of Jesus too. But you gotta know. Yeah. You gotta have that wisdom. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you gotta watch them. You gotta watch mm -hmm. certain people. Because I wanna live. I wanna come out of this thing. I wanna be dead on the floor. Amen. I wanna come out so I can still testify and give God's glory. Give God's praise. Give God's glory. So, so, right so bring it out. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Thank right you. There. Praise God. Hallelujah.
Now when you, woo, boy, when you thirsty, man, that cold water, woo, ain't nothing like it. It says, so is this news from a far country. So that's that word of God. Amen. So is that word. That word, oh, when you get that word in it, it's like, woo, hallelujah. Come on, it's nothing like the word of God. It can't make me feel my thirst. Here's what Jesus Christ said about that word. Because he is the word. Come on. You shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth is free. Make you free. All right, so that means I was bound at one time. Yeah. But because Sister Melody gave me the word to deliver me from what I was bound by, she, I can't get loose of something that I don't know I'm bound Come on. Amen. So y'all want to let me know when I'm bound Come on. with the word. Now, when it fit this spoken, Come on. hey, that brother and that sister talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I want to be free. Yeah. And who the son set free. So I'm going to say, Lord, set me free with a word. With your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Last one, Proverbs 29 and 20. Okay. Right. 809. Thank you, Lord. It says, Seest thou a man that is hasty in words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. <laughs> so, Come on. We, we already know what the Bible says about the fool. So he's saying there's more hope for a fool than it is for me if I'm hasty with my words. Yeah. If I'm quick to say something out of my mouth, every time somebody talk, I'm ready. Jesus. Be quick to listen. Yeah. Come on. Just when I've been lying and I've been trying to ask God, if it be quick to listen to what they're saying, Lord. Yeah. Because I want to say something with their words and hear. That's not going to help the person to go free. Amen. My goal in this ministry now is to help a person go free with words. Amen. All right. Now, if I'm hasty enough, because my wife should be talking to me and I break in, she said, well, I ain't finished. Amen. I thought she had finished. You know? <laughs> I didn't know she had finished. <coughs> Your mind got to and I didn't finish listening. Amen. And I'm saying something I ain't supposed to. Because yeah, that's not what she was saying. Amen. That's why it's good to be quick to listen. Amen. And slow speak. Yeah. Listen, listen to what they got to say. Amen. Yes. Amen. So that you can give a word. Amen. <laughs> so that you can give a word. So. Would that fall under what God like you say, bring your thoughts under captivity so before you speak, Think yeah. about what you're going yeah. to say. Yeah. Before you say it, it yeah. will help you right there. Yeah. So, yeah. so that would be a beautiful thing. Amen. So us as Christians, when somebody says something to us, instead of brush right back out to them, Amen. take time to think about how you're going to answer them because you could have some wrong, That's right. and you don't want to be there. That's, That's right. Because of who you are. That's good. That's good. Amen. Amen. So we're not out of word. Come on. We're out of time. Amen. Bro!